And now, suspense. Your host is Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite makes over 400 products for cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes, and boats in 28 plants from coast to coast. Autolite serves the greatest names in the industry. Its products include instruments and gauges, wire and cable, distributors, coils, and a complete line of ignition engineered standard and resistor type spark plugs. Autolite also makes starting motor armatures, starting motors, generators, voltage regulators, and all types of batteries, including the famous Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. So from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite and its 98,000 dealers everywhere present Suspense. Tonight's story, Kiss Me Again, Stranger, is the television premiere of the new bestseller written by one of our most popular novelists, Daphne du Maurier. This story also appears in the April issue of Today's Woman. Mark my words, Harry, he's no good. I could tell it the moment I set eyes on him. I'm a quiet man, he says, when he comes to rent the room. Quiet, indeed. Smoky is what I call it. You'd better put a drop in that. It's that mean outside, it goes right through the wall. Because if we hadn't had so many vacancies, I wouldn't have rented it to him in the first place. You don't suppose he's wanted, do you, Harry? By the police, I mean. Here he comes now, sneaking down the stairs. Well, I've half a mind to tell him that yeah, he... Ah, leave him be him. He's a right to keep to himself if he wants to. And that's all you've got against him. Oh, that's a nice thing to say, I must say. Shh. Oh, Mr. Matthew. Did you call me, Mrs. Thompson? Yes, I did. I was wondering if you'd like a nice hot cup of tea. I've already had my tea, but uh, thanks for asking. Here you now. What did I tell you? Uh, leave him be. He's harmless. Oh, that's what you think. Well, if anything terrible happens, don't say I didn't warn you. Yes, sir. Yes. We've already done that, sir. I understand. Look, sir, if you'd rather put someone else in charge of this case, I... 
but there's absolutely nothing linking these four killings together. What do you expect me to do, sir? I see. Very well, sir. Sir Roger would like an immediate solution to the case, Sergeant. Ah, you shouldn't let him worry you, sir. It's the case, not Sir Roger, that worries me. Well, it takes time. Well, time's expensive when it costs lives. Now, how do you get four people to go to different places in the country, lonely places to get killed? Well, you make friends with them first, I suppose. Or maybe you act timid and gentle. Yes, yeah, so that they won't know what you're really capable of. Or maybe you, maybe you are timid and gentle. Yes. That's why you kill with a knife. I must be getting old, Sergeant. I'm becoming fanciful. The time's getting short. You mean maybe there'll be another one soon? We haven't caught the killer yet, have we? Oh, I'm all right here, thanks. But this is so far back. I don't mind. Sorry. <laughs> thanks, anyway. Suit yourself. <laughs> No, you don't remember me, do you? Should I? Well, I was here yesterday, too. You mean you came to see the show again? No, not the show. You. Oh. When do you get off duty? As a matter of fact, I get off right now. Not that it's any of your business. Please don't be mad. I've been sitting there for an hour trying to make up my mind to ask you to come and have supper with me. Just like that? I guess I sound rather fresh when you don't even know me or anything. Don't let it bother you. You're not the first man who's tried to pick me up. Look here, I couldn't go out with you even if I wanted to. I have a date already. Well, I asked you anyway. I didn't think I'd get up enough nerve even to do that. You know, it doesn't have to be tonight. What about tomorrow? I don't even know whether I'll be free. I'll risk it. I, I could meet you right next door at the Queen's Pub. How about it? All right. It's a day. You won't be sorry. How about letting go of the lady's arm, chum? Oh, hello, Gus. Having trouble with this half pint? Of course not, Gus. Oh, that's good. I wouldn't like to hit such a little fella. Might hurt him. Come on, Gus. I'm all through. Right. So long, shorty. Mind your manners now. Poor little fellow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't make money on these I've bet them on the two thirty. Over and over. I know you have. Yeah. Don't ever. All you got to do. Give it on me. Hello. Oh, I was beginning to be afraid you weren't coming. I can't stay, but I didn't want to stand you up. Why can't you stay? I just can't. I quit my job today. That means I have to make other plans. That was pretty sudden, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. I don't like to stay on the job very long. I get restless. I guess I should be glad you came at all. I wanted to. Do have something. Well, all right, a beer. Look, I'm very sorry about the way Gus acted yesterday. Oh, 
Oh, he's just like all of them. I know what you mean. They tend to get that way when they're in the army, especially the Air Force. They think they can get away with anything they want to do. Oh, it's not just the army. They're all like that. Haven't you ever noticed about big men a special kind of arrogance, I guess you call it? As if they have the right to push anyone around. Sometimes they find out there are small men you can't push around. Like you, for instance? Like me, for instance. You and the phone, huh? <laughs> you know, I knew if I could meet you, it'd be this way. You know, usually I can't talk at all. I, I, I don't know why exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound rather funny, doesn't it? <laughs> I like you. I almost wish I didn't have to go. Then you will see me again. If you like. Well, since you won't be seeing your Air Force friend, what about tomorrow? How do you know I won't be seeing my friend? Oh, I, I don't know exactly. I just thought from the way you talked, you, you wouldn't be. Oh, well, all right. It's a date. Where will we meet? Well, why not right outside here at the bus stop at 12 o'clock? All right, but where are we going to go? Some place where there aren't so many people. Somewhere in the country. That would be lovely. Goodbye. I know. Another one last night. Here's a nice young fella comes down from his squadron for a spot of leave and gets a knife stuck into him. It's high time the police did something about it. some shopping. Looking for something, Mrs. Thompson? I was just tidying up the area, but I could come back later if you're going out again. Fine. You do that. Well, Annie? Annie? Uh, uh, listen to this, Anne. The young Air Force sergeant who was the fifth victim has been identified as Sergeant Gus Mortimer who was spending his leave in London. The police suspect the killer is a former member of the Air Force and when... Please. Hurry along, please. 
How far are you going, sir? To the end of the line, please. Hi there. This is Rex Marshall speaking for Autolite. We'll get back to our suspense story in just a moment. Right now, I'd like to show you one of our famous little cartoon stories. This particular one is about that eminent philosopher and scholar, Professor Stuyvesant Smog. Now, it seems the professor was on his way to the academy to deliver a lecture on improving the memory. So he got into his automobile, stepped on the starter, and... Uh-oh, nothing happened. No, <laughs> looks like the professor wasn't going to go anywhere because he'd forgotten to fill his battery with water, and it was as dry as advanced calculus. Well, you see, that was the time that the eminent professor learned a lesson himself. He learned that what he should have had was an Autolite stay-full battery the famous battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. I tell you what, I'd like to show you why that is. You see, in the ordinary battery, small particles keep flaking off the positive plates. So the ordinary battery has to have a large space in the bottom of the case to hold those particles. Otherwise, they'll get together and short-circuit the plates and the battery's dead. But there's a big difference in the new Autolite Stay Full. Every positive plate has a fiberglass retaining mat protecting it and holding the active materials in place to reduce that flaking. There's the fiberglass that gives such real advantages to the Autolite Stay Full battery. Now, while the ordinary battery requires this much extra space below the plates, the Autolite Stay Full doesn't need all that extra space, so we use it to advantage by putting it up above. Well, now, with both batteries filled to capacity, you can see that the solution in the ordinary battery barely covers those all-important plates. But in the Autolite Stay Full, there's over three times as much liquid reserve for over three times the protection. Well, as water evaporates in the ordinary battery, parts of the plates are left exposed and partially inactive. But when the same amount of water evaporates from the Autolite Stay Full, the plates are fully protected and still active. That's why your Autolite Stay Full battery needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And it's important to remember that the Autolite Stay Full gives longer life in tests conducted according to accepted life cycle standards. So why don't you pay a visit soon to your Autolite battery dealer? He services all makes, and if you need a replacement, he'll recommend an Autolite Stay Full battery. The battery that states right on the case needs water only three times a year in normal car use. To quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, simply phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'll gladly tell you his name and location. That's Western Union, Operator 25. And remember... From bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. <laughs> Of Kiss Me Again, Stranger, starring Maria Riva and Richard Waring. Would you like an apple? Oh, yes, half of one. Trams seem to make less noise than they do in the city. Yes, it's always like this in the country. That's why I like it. You're so nice to be with, Jim. How is it you've never had a girl? Oh, I don't know. I guess I never met the right one before. When I was a kid, I remember thinking how wonderful it would be to have a girl of your own and not be lonely anymore. Someone you could buy things for. Flowers, maybe. Then on, on special occasions, something she'd seen in a shop window but couldn't afford, like a, like a bracelet. Something I couldn't afford either, but I'd buy it anyway. It'd be worth it just to see her face when she opened the package. Haven't you ever done that? I've never known a girl I wanted to do it for before I met you. I used to think the ward changed girls somehow. The ward changed everyone, sir. 
Yes, I, I suppose so. Funny, I remember when I was called up. I don't want to hear what you did in the war. I don't want to talk about the war at all. All right. I, I'd rather talk about you anyway. Tim, I'm not the girl you're looking for. But you are. Oh, Anna, you are. It's your R. F. friend, isn't it? I was fool enough to think that if he wasn't in the picture, I... What's the use? I should have known better. Please, Tim. Please don't say any more. Please don't spoil it. All right. I won't. I won't say anything more. Anything at all. There's no knife here, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, not he's got it with him. That murder and someone else, that's what he's doing. And when they killed that poor Sergeant Mortimer. Now look, Mrs. Thompson, we appreciate your telephoning us, but there's nothing Nothing? That... Well, now what about this? Now it said in the paper that you thought that the killer was someone they'd thrown out of the RIF. That was only a newspaper story. But there's his medical discharge. There it is in black and white. Yes. Find anything, Sergeant? Not a thing, sir. Can I finish? Yes, sir. Good. Now look, Mrs. Thompson, there's hey, nothing... Hey. Are you upstairs? That's Harry, the husband. Oh, you'll be that upset when he knows I've called in the police. I'll be right down, dearie. Perhaps I'd better go down and explain it to him. So Harry upsets that easy. Yes, now, why don't you do that? We'll we'll follow you down in a, in a minute or two. Oh. Excuse me. Hmm? <laughs> Hello. Whoa. Looks like the old girl might not have been as wrong as we thought she was. Have a look at that cigarette lighter, sir. Sergeant Gus Mortimer, RAF. Can I have a knife? Yeah. I must have left my lighter somewhere. Yes, I picked it up off the table last night. I meant to bring it with me today, but I forgot. Hadn't we better be getting back? What's your hurry? Have you got a date? No. It's late. And I'm tired. Well, if it's the RAF men you have a weakness for, maybe I should tell you. I was in it myself once. What did you say? I said I was in it myself once. Oh, not for long. I didn't come up to their exalted standards, so I was discharged. That's why I never mentioned it. Why did you have to be one of them? Why? Now, you're not going to tell me you've got anything against the RAF, are you? I hate them. Why? Because of what they did to us in Germany. All right. So you're German, but the war's over. Not for me, it isn't. Maybe some fools have forgotten. I haven't. Destroying our homes. Making us go underground like animals. But that wasn't enough. I had to go right on killing. First my mother. And then my father. But I got away. I wish I had. 
Oh, you poor kid. I don't want your pity. Save it for them. Because I've made them pay. And pay and pay. It's all right. Tim. Kiss me. Please. Kiss me again, stranger. No. No. Not you, Anna. Not you. Anna. Anna, wait. wasn't my fault. I couldn't help it. She, she didn't even look where she was going. She ran right in front of me tram. Anna. I, I, I better get an ambulance. It's no good. She's dead. It wasn't my fault. You, you saw that, didn't you? You saw that. No, it wasn't your fault. Go get the police. Yes. Yes. It wasn't anybody's fault. Not anyone's. So we come to the end of another story of suspense brought to you by Autolite. In just a moment, I'll tell you the title of our story for next week and the names of our stars. First, I'd like to remind you drivers that the Autolite Stay Full is a famous battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. To quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite battery dealer, just phone Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. I'm Operator 25. Call me and I'll gladly tell you the name of your nearest Autolite battery dealer. That's Western Union, Operator 25. And remember... From bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Our story will be The Duel, one of Alexander Dumas' most famous stories, starring Eva Gabor, Roger Dan, and Arnold Moss. The Duel, another story well calculated to keep you in suspense. <laughs> Tuesday Night Thrills, Danger on the CBS Television Network.